do you want to decrease your hunger naturally, eat less and hence lose weight? Well, in today's part one video, I will show you how to suppress your appetite and lose weight without having to take drugs like Ozempic or Wagovi. These natural appetite suppressants have shown encouraging results in scientific studies and can be potential alternatives to the current weight loss drugs. I will reveal how I suppress my appetite by using them to help me lose 30 kilos multiple times after having my three kids. Using them may also help you decrease your hunger, allow you to eat less and help you lose weight. Hi, my name is Dr. Sabali Powell. I'm a professor in bariatric medicine, a clinical weight loss expert, and a registered nutritionist. In my 35-year career, I've published over 90 papers in nutrition and fitness, so I believe I have the credibility and personal experience to speak on this subject. And before I forget, please like and subscribe if you're new to my channel for new videos every week, and share them with friends and family who might benefit from them. With your support, I can keep making these free videos to help you. So a big part of successfully losing weight is control your appetite, which helps control how much food goes into your mouth. Limiting calories is obviously easier if you can feel full with a smaller amount of food. This is the entire premise of how medications like Ozempic and Wagovi have been proven to assist individuals in losing a significant amount of weight with substantial scientific evidence supporting their effectiveness. However, these GLP-1 agonists can be very expensive and sometimes they're not enough available, which can make it difficult for the average person to get a hold of the medication. So the question is, is there a way to turn on the same fullness pathway naturally rather than with a prescribed drug and achieve similar hunger suppressing response? Well, the answer is yes, there are definitely alternatives to these drugs. These alternatives claim to provide similar benefits to injectable GLP-1 medications, but they're more convenient and can be also more affordable, sometimes found in powder or pill forms. After you eat a meal, your body naturally produces a hormone called GLP-1 in the small intestine and then releases it into the bloodstream. However, taking medications like Ozempic increases the levels of GLP-1 even more than eating alone, thereby helping your body control its response to food more effectively. GLP-1 helps keep your blood sugar level stable by binding to the GLP-1 receptor in the pancreas, which then causes insulin to be released from the pancreas. The increase in insulin in the bloodstream then helps lower blood sugar levels. GLP-1 also slows digestion by inhibiting peristalsis of the stomach and makes you feel full and the signals to the brain receptors making you feel less hungry. Therefore, it's a no-brainer that anything that increases GLP-1 levels can be beneficial for managing diabetes and your weight. Number one, hit. One of the downsides after a tough workout is feeling extremely hungry, which can lead to binging, making it difficult to achieve weight loss goals. Believe it or not, high intensity interval training or HIIT, which involves short bursts of intense exercise followed by rest or low intensity periods, can significantly increase GLP-1 secretion, regulate blood sugar levels and appetite. The intense nature of HIIT boosts the metabolism and enhances insulin sensitivity, which can also lead to increased GLP-1 levels. A systematic review and a meta-analysis published in the International Journal of Diabetes found that short-term and long-term HIIT significantly increased GLP-1 levels in individuals with type 2 diabetes. Research published in Cardiovascular Diabetology showed that HIIT improved metabolic syndrome factors and was associated with reduced inflammation markers. Well, a clinical research study showed that doing HIIT or high-intensity interval training can help reduce your appetite. The study found that overweight men who did 30 minutes of HIIT ate fewer calories compared to when they did moderate intensity exercise for the same period of time. It seems that after doing HIIT, they feel less hungry. This is because HIIT reduces the hormone ghrelin along with the increase in GLP-1, which makes you feel less hungry. HIIT also increases peptide PYY levels suppressing appetite. Another study highlighted that HIIT increases the activity of interleukin-6, which also plays a role in reducing appetite. These studies all suggest that HIIT can regulate blood sugar levels and promote satiety, making it a potential natural aid for managing appetite and supporting weight loss. The optimal duration of 20 to 30 minutes per HIIT session allows for a higher level of intensity, maximizing effort and metabolic stress without leading to excessive fatigue. Performing HIIT two to three times per week is optimal as it provides enough stimulus for physiological adaptation while allowing adequate recovery of 48 hours between sessions. There seems to be a timing effect of HIIT as well, where performing HIIT in the morning can boost your metabolism and help you burn more calories 
change throughout the day. However, you can get peak performance if done in the afternoon as your body temperature is higher later on in the day. This can then enhance muscle function, strength, enzyme activity and endurance. Evening workouts can also help relieve stress accumulated throughout the day. Because heart rate and blood pressure are at its lowest in the late afternoon and evening, doing hit late in the day can also reduce the risk of injury and potentially improve performance. Ultimately, the best time for HIIT depends on when you feel most energetic and motivated. Experimenting with different times can help you find what works best for your body and schedule. I usually do HIIT a couple of times a week in the morning because it energizes me. So in summary, morning is great for boosting metabolism and establishing a routine. In the afternoon, it's ideal for peak performance and quick reaction times. And in the evening, it's good for stress relief and lowers the risk of injury. Number two, ACV or apple cider vinegar is also considered a natural GLP-1 agonist. Acetic acid, the primary active component in ACV, can slow gastric or stomach emptying, which helps prolong the feeling of fullness and can lead to increased GLP-1 levels. A study published in the Journal of Functional Foods found that ACV consumption before a meal significantly increased after meal or postprandial GLP-1 levels and improved glycemic control in healthy adults. Research published in Nutrition and Metabolism shows that ACV intake reduced body fat and waist circumference, which was associated with increased GLP-1 levels. A meta-analysis published in BMC Complementary Medicine and Therapies reviewed multiple studies and concluded that ACV consumption improved lipid profiles and glycemic control, potentially through mechanisms involving GLP-1. These studies suggest that ACV can help regulate blood sugar levels and promote satiety, making it a potential natural aid for managing diabetes and your way. I made a long video on ACV. If you'd like more detail and information on this, you can watch it on here on my channel. By incorporating ACV into my diet, I get the health benefits without overwhelming my taste buds. I mix one to two tablespoons of ACV in a glass of water, add a bit of honey, sweetener, or lemon juice to improve the taste. Drinking a diluted ACV solution before meals can also help with digestion and appetite control. I usually combine ACV with olive oil, mustard, and herbs for a tangy salad dressing, or I use ACV in marinade for vegetables and meat to add flavor and tenderize. I also add a tablespoon of ACV to fruit or green smoothies because the strong flavors of the fruits and vegetables will mask the vinegar taste. I use a splash of ACV to enhance the flavor of soups, stews, and pasta sauce. You can also add a tablespoon of ACV to your herbal teas for an extra health boost, sparkling water, and a bit of fruit juice for a refreshing drink. Begin with a small amount and see how your body reacts and gradually increase the dosage. Make sure you use organic, unfiltered ACV. Look for the ACV containing the mother, a colony of beneficial bacteria. Number three, spermidine. It's a natural occurring polyamine found in various foods and has been studied for its role as a natural GLP-1 agonist. But spermidine is involved in cellular metabolism, autophagy, and processes that influence the secretion of GLP-1. Its anti-inflammatory properties may also enhance GLP-1 secretion. A study published in Nature Communications found that spermidine supplementation improved metabolic health markers, including increased GLP-1 levels in animal models. A human clinical study published in Cell Reports indicated that spermidine intake was associated with improved metabolic health and increased GLP-1 levels in older adults. Another study in the frontiers of pharmacology demonstrated that spermidine could enhance GLP-1 secretion through its effect on cellular metabolism and autophagy. Spermidine is naturally found in various foods. As you can see by this table, wheat germ, one of the richest sources of spermidine, a cheese contains high levels of spermidine, soy products including nato and tofu, legumes such as lentils and chickpeas, mushrooms, especially taki mushrooms, whole grains like brown rice and oats, vegetables including broccoli, cauliflower, and green peppers. I take spermidine every day in the form of a powder corella. Corella is a type of single-celled green algae that grows in fresh water and is often referred to as superfood due to its impressive nutritional profile including vitamins B12, iron, magnesium, antioxidants, and omega-3 fatty acids. It also contains antioxidants like chlorophyll, beta-carotene, and lutein to help protect cells from damage. It's also been shown to detoxify the body by binding to heavy metals 
and other harmful compounds, aiding in their removal. Corella may boost the immune system by enhancing the activity of various immune cells. Some studies suggest that Corella can help lower LDL, which is the bad cholesterol, and triglycerides, as well as reduce blood pressure. So I take high quality powder of Corella to get my spermidine, not only for the appetite suppressing properties of spermidine, but also to get the other benefits I get from Corella. However, the spermidine content in Corella can vary depending on the specific strain and growing conditions. Let me know in the comments below if you want to know more about the one I take. I'm not affiliated with the company by any means, but I have researched to find out a high quality one that I get shipped once a year from the UK. Number three, spirulina. It is a type of blue-green allergy, which is considered to be a natural GLP-1 agonist due to its bioactive compound that can stimulate secretion of GLP-1. Spirulina is often hailed as a superfood due to its rich nutrient profile and numerous health benefits. Spirulina contains phycocyanin, a pigment protein complex that has been shown to have antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties. If this phycocyanin pigment that is believed to stimulate GLP-1 secretion. The amino acids and peptides in spirulina are also thought to enhance metabolic processes, potentially increasing GLP-1 levels. But a study published in the Journal of Nutrition showed that spirulina supplementation increased GLP-1 in animal models and human subjects. Furthermore, another study demonstrated that spirulina could enhance GLP-1 secretion and improve metabolic health markers in obese and diabetic animal models. General dose recommendations in powder form are between 1 to 3 grams per day. Higher doses up to 10 grams per day are sometimes used in the studies, but it's probably best to start with a lower dose and gradually increase it. Typically, spirulina supplements come in 500 milligram tablets or capsules with one to two tablets being commonly recommended per day. There are several more natural GLP-1 agonists, but I will discuss them in part two of this video next week. Click on the link below to download my free weight loss guidebook or to watch more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching. This is Dr. Sabali Powell. See you next week.